This one is union to intersection. Uh, we're going to implement this type. It's kind of what it sounds like. So uh, let's just take the challenge and we'll we'll see a, kind of an example of it. So we get as an input some union of TypeScript values. Mm -hmm. And as an output, we get that same set of values, but they we use this little uh, intersection operator instead of the union operator. So that works with any value. Again, it could be functions. It could be anything. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah, so what do you think? Uh, any any idea how you would even approach like something like this? Oh boy, uh, I only have an idea. Okay, I, I have to admit, I'll I don't you, know how to do this. I'll give uh, you a hint. <laughs> it in, it involves uh, it involves functions mm -hmm. and abuse. Okay, I'll, let me just show so, you because. <laughs> Wait, 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 no, I, I, I think I know this. I think okay, all right, <laughs> I have all seen right. this before and, and understood it at one point in my life. Oh, God. Um, function returns have, are treated differently. So if you do a, um, a union of functions, the return type of that is somehow different. Okay, yeah, that's that's the closest I'll get on my own. Please you're pretty close. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very very close to what you're saying. So this person on GitHub Jo32 wrote this uh, little description, which I copied in here. So here's the solution. Uh, so they say the magic of the solution is given a type like arg u to any or arg v to any. If you want to find an argument using keyword infer satisfying u and v, the type of it must be u intersected with v. So you can abuse that fact. So here's the first part of the extends. It's uh, this t extends t is forcing the distributed distributi distributivity. Sorry, tongue twister. And so we have arg t, and then we're intersecting it with an inferred arg u, and then we're returning u. What do you think? What? <laughs> So I'm gonna need a minute. <laughs> to so read let me this. Um, let me or show an alternative. Let, let me, it's almost exactly the same, but it uses a uh, it uses a helper type, and maybe that we can talk about it like in isolation first. So this is like literally the same thing, except that it uses this union to function helper type. So if we take a look at this uh, type x equals uh, let's say a or b. And we pass this in to union to function. Let's see. We're going to get out a type that uh, it's two functions, and their parameters are these values that we passed in in the union. So then, if you think about it, if mm -hmm. we take if we take that thing um, and we uh, and we put it in the second part of an, if we, if we put it here in the end of an extends block, um, oops. So we got to move our, this guy up here. What we're going to see is it's going to infer, uh, it's going to, it's going to return never. Um, is that correct? You know, you function you, oh, um, because we have to put, I'm not sure if this would this actually follows to to refactor it this way. But okay, maybe maybe let's just stick on the the first thing then. But union to function itself will it still work if I do that. Yeah, it creates this this set of functions from the union. It like upgrades them into functions, and then once we've done that. We're asking TypeScript to infer the value that satisfies both of these things. And the only value Which that's is what it says A and B. Is A and B. Yeah, intersected with B. That's the only thing that satisfies. Oof. Oh. Got it now? I love it. Yeah. It's it's oh, a yeah. it's a bit of a there's that's really so no cute. other way to do this. It's a bit of a quagmire, and this is the um this is the way to solve it. Uh I'll show uh, another, this isn't a solution necessarily to this problem, but I prepared like a little bit of uh, a primer on, on this stuff. So in the TypeScript 2.8 release notes, that's, that's when this kind of came about, they give this example. So I can say foo t, t extends, and then I put an object in her, here, 
and I say, uh, infer you, infer you. Look, and this is a little weird to infer something from both, but it's saying like, what could be, what could be uh, both of these things? And in that case, if I pass string and string, we get out string. But if I pass string and number, we get out a union. In, Beautiful. I in, forgot you could do that. that yeah, actually, it's a that weird, yeah, it's a weird syntax, view. for sure. This is very rare that you would do, like, infer the same thing twice. So if we do that same thing now, but instead of, a fu instead of a, an object with its values, we infer functions in those positions, it changes. So this is the same thing. We have string and string. This is like parallel to the above example. But when we do string and number, the only thing that satisfies that because function arguments are covariant, the only thing that sat, which is like all covariance and contravariance and all these things are a whole other topic. But the only thing that satisfies this constraint is a, is the intersection. And so that's how you can f you can abuse this. And then we're like forcing it back. So we're turning it into a function and then turning it like inside out back from a function. And that's how we get the intersection. So turning it into a function, extracting it back out of a function and then grab the value. That's that's it. Very cool. I like this. Um, I, this one is funny because like a lot of people shake their fist at the cloud like, this is insanity. Why would you ever need this? It turns out you need this a lot. Uh, this is, as you get into the extreme and hard challenges, being able to turn a union into an intersection is a very common need. It's not independently useful. Uh, I don't think there's ever a, like a library that would export this type or something like it, but it is a, uh, it is a building block that is important. So, okay. Any other thoughts? No, just... Pleased. Thank you for showing me this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, let's keep going then. <laughs>